One of the most frustrating things that happens to every MCAT student I work with, and it even happened to me, is that after weeks of studying, you sit down to take a practice exam and the score doesn't change, or worse, it even drops. In this video, you're going to learn about the three reasons that score plateaus happen, you'll assess why that score plateau happened for you, and then we'll talk about what to do to break through that plateau and continue making progress. So, why do score plateaus and score drops happen in the first place? The first reason is non-test factors. It's a test, it's on a single day, which means that day can impact your performance. Whether you slept the night before, or maybe you're super exhausted from the week. Maybe you're sick, or you're kind of anxious and had a panic attack. Maybe you just weren't feeling your best, or the environment that you were in was not ideal for you. So let's assess if these non-test factors were a part of your score plateau or drop. Answer these questions with a yes, a no, or an unsure. Did fatigue or anxiety affect my performance? Did the environment I was in affect my performance in a negative way? Was I distracted at parts throughout my exam? Did I perform below my very best effort? If you answered yes to any of these questions, well, we may just have found the reason for your score plateau. The second reason why score plateaus happen is that the MCAT is a scaled binary test, but it's testing very non-binary skills. What I mean by that is that you can get a question right or wrong on the MCAT. You don't get any partial credit and you don't get any benefit of being really close to the answer. But in reality, there is a huge difference in your improvement between just guessing on a question and having no idea versus being super close and choosing between two answers. The test and the scaled score does not capture that nuance. And so we need to dive a little deeper to see, did I actually improve and I just didn't get that question right? or am I still back in the guessing stage? Let's move over into the spreadsheet that I like to use to break down this nuance. All right, as you can see, we've got two sets of exam data here, and they're broken up by all the different content categories that show up on the exam from 1A to 10A. We also at the bottom here have our scaled scores. And what we can see is we have the exact same scaled score. That feels like a plateau to us, but look already at the data. The colors show us that we made huge changes and even improved in a lot of areas. So sure, the 504 is still the same, but check it out. This student did way better in biochemistry and psych -soc, and they only dropped a couple points in chem -phys and cars. And in fact, if we dive even deeper into the subject areas that they were challenged by versus what they did well, we can see they made huge improvements in biology and biochemistry, 1A through 3B. Sure, the physics and the gen chem and the orgo stayed the same, and we dropped a little in the organic subjects, which are in orange here. But again, big jump in improvement in 5E, for example, which is thermodynamics, and big improvements across most of the psych -soc categories. Even in CARS, where we saw a drop in score, we can see that we improved in the humanities and then just dropped a little in the social sciences. So I can bet money on this student having worked on biochemistry, humanities and psych on their exam, and that resulted in some huge improvements. But if all they looked at was the scaled score, it can feel really demotivating, like oh, I did all that work and it didn't improve. This data shows that they did improve and that the scaled score just didn't capture that improvement. Now this spreadsheet and the video trainings explaining how to use them are all in my practice exam mini course, which is free and linked in the caption below. The final reason why you can have a score plateau or drop is that the MCAT just has a huge volume of content and skills that could be tested on the exam. And it's quite possible that the content and skills that showed up in one exam just happen to be unfamiliar or something that you haven't tackled in a while. So you'll need to break down the types of questions that were tested and whether or not you just didn't know that content, haven't touched it in a few months, or you are struggling with the skills and strategies behind what the question was asking. We can return to the spreadsheet to assess if your plateau is due to unfamiliar content or skill issues. For this student, I would look at the content categories that had consistently low percentages. Things like 5A here as well as maybe 4D and say, you know what, these have been low across multiple exams, 
maybe there's some content or understanding that we're missing. Then we want to look at areas where we actually saw a decrease in percent correct. Like in this student's data, we can see that 5BC and 5D kind of took a hit this exam. So you'll want to go through each question you got wrong in these major priority content categories and figure out, was it content, skills, or maybe it was a silly mistake. Silly mistakes are things like where you look at the question and you go, wait a second, I knew that material. I have no idea why I picked C because I knew it was B. If that happens a few times in your section, then the plateau may actually be due back to reason number one, the non-test factors, because often silly mistakes are due to fatigue, lack of confidence, anxiety, or a desire to just get this over with. So check in, and if you notice a lot of silly mistakes, it's probably actually the non-test factors and not the content or skills. Before we go into what to do to break through that plateau, quick reminder to please subscribe to this channel where you'll learn MCAT content, test-taking strategies, and mental fitness tips to help you perform your best on test day. All right, let's break through your plateau based on which of the three reasons was most prevalent in your exam. If it was the non-test factors, I want you to ask yourself, what environmental, emotional, or physical changes can I make between now and my next test day? If fatigue was the big issue, I'm going to be honest, you probably need a break. A few days off can do wonders for your score if you're facing burnout or extreme fatigue. If anxiety was the major issue, work on those mental resets, staying calm, checking in with those negative inner voices, and feel free to check out some of our videos on building test day confidence. If your plateau was due to that scaled score reasoning where you actually did see improvement, it's just the scaled score didn't show it, guess what? You are full steam ahead. Keep doing what you're doing, continue your MCAT prep, focusing on your highest priority challenge areas and trust in the process because you are making improvements and you're likely to see that score go up on your next practice exam. Finally, if it was reason number three, content or skills, you know what to do. If it's content, hit the books, watch the videos, make sure you've brushed up on those key areas so you get those questions right next time. If it was skills and strategy, it's all active practice. Doing practice problems and passages and working on how you're going through the passage and the section will help you get more points and feel more confident on your next exam. You now have all the tools you need to break through that score plateau and see progress on your next exam. I hope that was helpful, and as always, happy studying.